There comes a point in time when tuning virtual volumetric efficiency that you start seeing some funky numbers happening whenever you calculate coefficients. I'm going to break down why that is, what we could do to try and mitigate it and alleviate that problem. So stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we're talking about VVE coefficient calculations and how things can get wonky. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everybody out there who has subscribed lately. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that button down below. Uh, there's a lot of great content coming out on the Super Auto, on tuning, all kinds of fun stuff like that. But I want to thank everybody that signed up. You guys have been great. Uh, I had hoped that we might be able to hit 2,000 by the Independence Day. I have no doubt in my mind. We are just racking up new followers, new viewers, new subscribers. You guys are the best. And because of that, I will keep on putting out the content that you want to see. So don't be afraid to hit up the comments and ask for something specific like someone did for this video. This is a subscriber request, but it's a good topic and one that needs to be addressed for anybody that is doing VVE tuning. I've touched on it in the speed density uh, tune uh, video. I'll put a link in the corner there, but basically what we're looking at, and uh, hold on a second, let me get this thing recording down here. Okay, now that we're gonna get this thing started recording, we're gonna be looking at a 2015 Corvette stock. This is kind of the same across the board for all VVE tuning. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is the coefficients. I've gone into it before. If we look at the coefficients, I'm pulling it up right now. If we look at the coefficients, it's a bunch of random numbers that don't make any sense to us. That's why we use the virtual VE tables uh, to convert all these coefficients into a speed density tuning, tunable table, a standard volumetric efficiency table like we're used to doing on the Gen 3s and early Gen 4s. But there's something a little bit different about that because all of this is derived from these coefficients, from these long calculations. As we make changes to that VE table, whenever we hit calculate coefficients, it has to try and make those changes that we did make sense in the form of a calculation. And in order to do that, sometimes it has to shift these numbers. Well, what we see is every once in a while, it might take one of these numbers and really shift it. And whenever that happens, you might get some weird negative numbers and things like that. But there is a couple things that we can do to help alleviate that. And it mainly is based on what we call the zones. So on a virtual VE table, you have zones that are made up of RPM ranges and your pressure ratio in the case of this Corvette. Before that, on the earlier VE tables, the, it'll be based on probably your manifold pressure, but kind of the same, same concept between the two. And so we've got two areas that we look at down here on the tune. One of them is our zone RPM boundaries, as I talked about. And so you've got a zone that's gonna be zero to 1,000, 1,000 to 1,750, 1,750 to 2,500, 2,500 to 3,250, 3,250 to red line or beyond, based on you know which, how your table's set up. That all makes sense. We're not gonna look at DOD. If you want me to do more displacement on demand stuff, post down below in the comments, let me know. But for the most part, if you're watching this stuff, I'm guessing you've already disabled DOD. Good for you, you don't need that crap. It is terrible. Uh, so let's look at the other one, which is gonna be the zone pressure ratio boundaries. And so if you look across the top, it already has your different RPM zones. And so this is going to be what plots out our graphs. Now, I'm getting ready to show you those. Don't worry, I'm getting ready to show you. But as you can see, these are different pressure ratios. You will see how these sync up. If we go over to the VVE table, let's go full screen here. There's this awesome checkbox over here that says show zone numbers. Boom, there you have it. You have 28 zones on your volumetric efficiency table. Each one of these zones represents a collection of coefficients that are used in a math formula to calculate your fueling. And that this is how it breaks up all this stuff to make it where we can see this as a VE math. How does this apply to us? Well, whenever we start having issues with coefficients getting really wonky and, and we're trying to dial our fuel in, we might identify zones that we have more problems than others dialing our fuel in. And what we can do is we can shrink the zones down or we can make the zones bigger. And that will adjust how the coefficients work. And so a lot of these things, like if you look at this zone right here, this zone is huge 
huge. I don't like that it's that huge because that's getting into our wide open throttle zone. Uh, we're going to be really dependent on speed density up here. And so we might want to add some resolution in there. Well, how do we do that? Well, we need to first look at our RPM zones and see where our demarcation lines are. And what I like to do is simplify this stuff. So we know we're going out to 6,400 RPMs at the top end. So let's dial that back by say 1,200 RPMs. So we're going to still have that up top. So if we're 6,500 at the top end, 6,400, we want to go 5,200 as our first zone uh, to the far right. And so this is going to be 5,200 to red line. So that means we can go on this zone, let's say 4,000 to 5,200. Boom, we've got the next one mapped out. So we will go to the next one, we will go 2,800. Don't go, don't go 28,000, 2,800 to the next one. And then on our final one, we would normally go uh, 1,400, 1,600. Let's do 1,400 uh, on those. And we don't have to update the DOD boundaries, but I'm going to go ahead and plug those in. Okay, so now we have new RPM zones. Let's go see how that affected our VVE table. You can already see that there's a bunch of color shifts in here. That's because it has already adjusted the calculations based on you shifting the zones over. And this is saying that the numbers that used to be in here don't match up from the engine RPM and pressure ratio anymore because we have new zones. This is You have to do this before you start tuning. You can't go out, do a uh, log in speed density, come back, adjust the zones, and then apply your math to it. So apply your zone shifts, then go out, do your log, and apply it. If you're in the middle of speed density, you know, you're on step three, you can do it after you apply step three, adjust your RPM zone, your pressure ratio zones, get new zone boundaries set up, but then go out and log. That way you're logging against this fueling right here. But if we show our zone numbers on here real quick, you will see that we have new RPM ranges and we've simplified them. So our RPM barrier now is 0 to 1200, 1200 to 2600, 2600 to 3800, 3800 to 5000, and then 52 and beyond. And if you look all the way over, let's go full screen here. This area is a lot smaller. We have a lot more resolution at the 4000 to 5000 to, to 6000 range. So this allows us to have more tight calculations, more, uh, you know, dialed in math. Now we need to adjust our pressure ratio boundaries. Well, I'll be honest with you, if, you know, there's a uh, area down here that we can probably say that we're not going to hit, that we can kind of expand that first boundary out to 3,700. Say it's, it's, it's at 3,350 right now. We could go out to 3,700 on the pressure ratio. We'll see if that matches up to what we're seeing. Yep, 350 right there. We're going to take this one all the way across. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to simplify these. And instead of having these staggered stepped pressure ratio zones, we're going to kind of make these squares, just a grid so it's easier to tune for. This is on a one bar setup. If this were a two bar or a three bar setup, your pressure ratio zones are going to be a lot bigger, a lot more spread out, and you may have to massage those. As you, That's the problem with running a three bar. If you're not getting into the pressure of needing a three bar sensor, you are causing yourself more headaches than it's worth because you are losing resolution on your map. So normally whenever the chunk of data in between point A and point B is this big, whenever you go to a two bar, it's this big, and whenever you go to a three bar, it's this big. Well, if you're only using this section of the data, all of this is lost resolution. So you only want to go a step higher than you have to to be within the pressure of your engine if you are doing forced induction. If you're not doing forced induction, there is no reason to go above a single bar because that has positive pressure on it. You're not even going to see positive pressure in the best of days. So we'll do the same thing here. This one's a little bit low. Let's step this one out. Uh, let's just take a look at our map again. So we're making educated changes. Here's our first one down to 3,700. And if we show our zones again, we've got one from, from basically 376 out to 4,000. That's probably not too bad, but let's take it out to 418. So let's go 418 on the next one. And we're gonna make that across the board, 418 to square everything off. Boom. Now we'll go back, look at our map again, make sure that we're equally spacing all this stuff out. So, first one. Oh, we need to go out to 480. 
Nah, 420. We didn't go out far enough. Look at that. That's not enough resolution. That's too, that's too tight in that area. We want to kind of double that out. So 450 instead. Where it's at 418, I don't know why I said that. Let's go out to 450. So we'll put 450 across the board for our 1 to 2 range. That's looking better. So we got a little more up there. That one's not looking too bad, but look at how big these last two are. So we probably, this area down here is not much of an issue, and this is why it is stair-stepped, because it'll add resolution into this area, where we don't necessarily care about some of these areas, because you can't hit this kind of pressure ratio at 1,000 RPM or less. So... We might have to custom tailor some of these blocks, but for now, instead, we're going to kind of loosely dial these things in, and we want to take out this one that stops at 500 range, and we want to run it out to about 530. Let's take it out to 530 and see how we're looking. So there's the 500 range. You can see it's already flattened itself out. It only stair-stepped on the bottom end, but whenever you get into two bar, three bars, you might have to make adjustments to make sure you have the resolution throughout the map where you're looking. And then we will check her again. We're about done with this part. So we got better resolution. We're out to 530 before that. Well, we could probably go out to 560, but we cut down on the next step of resolution and we'll leave the last one in place for now because we've got a step right there and then we got the final step. We could drop this 0.85 down and soak up a little bit as a 0.84. Let's bring this down to a 0.82 across the board to narrow up that last one. And let's look at our zones now. Okay, so the other thing that we can do also is if we have a specific area where this is happening, whenever you come in here, you do your select all from your graph and you paste multiply by half and, and you come in here and you've got your adjusted stuff and then whenever you hit your calculate coefficients, if your math goes wonky in that section, say we have math down here that, uh, let's, let's go right in this area. We got math that goes real crazy in that section. You can undo it, highlight that section, and then do show zone numbers. Now I'll show you, oh, well that zone is eight and then crosses over into zone nine. Well, what if I just went over to my scanner and I looked at zone eight? And so my scanner is set up based off of my VE table here, and so I know I can literally find this zone. It's going to be 1,400 to 2,600 RPMs and then 0.45 to 0.51 in the pressure ratio are on the map. And then I can just copy the changes for that zone, come back over here, and apply, you know, paste, multiply by special, and just calculate the changes in that zone. And where you really will see the issues happening is whenever the changes overlap with some of the other zones. And maybe you're only doing one or two changes in the next zone, it might throw all those off. So after you get the changes applied to one zone, then you can come in and manually smooth or interpolate in between the two and try to recalculate for that next zone. So that will keep the math from getting crazy. If you keep on having issues after that point, you need to go in then and adjust a zone specifically for your trouble area. And so basically go in, find your RPM range, you know, draw a box around your trouble area, go into your zone numbers, and then adjust this area until that is one zone so you can tune that zone specifically. So that's basically it. I know that's a lot of information to shotgun at you. If you have to watch this a couple times, it'll start clicking into place whenever you think of the fact that each one of these boxes and numbers in the zone is one math calculation that is using all those coefficients. So whenever you're calculating coefficients, if it doesn't look right, if things get real out of place, get bent out of shape, you might have to adjust these. Or, as I said, you can try to just apply changes directly in the zone that is giving you trouble. It's a little bit more of a pain in the ass. It takes a little bit longer to do zone by zone, copy and paste over, and, and calculate coefficients, but those are some of the things that you can do to try and fix this problem. Uh, that doesn't work, hit up the comments below, let me know, give me some more feedback on what you're trying to do. You're really not going to run into this issue until you get into the more uh, exotic style of setups, forced induction, you know, cams maybe, things like that. So uh, that's basically it for trying to solve the VVE you know, issues, coefficient issues, and adjusting the RPM boundary. So if you have any questions, hit up the comments below. Throw a thumbs up, throw a thumbs down. If you throw the thumbs down, make sure you tell me what you did not like about the video. Maybe I spoke too fast. 
you can watch this video over. There's probably even a button that you can watch this thing at half speed. I know I talk fast sometimes. I'm trying to get as much information in under 15 minutes, and now I'm rambling. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, if you haven't already, check out the Patreon. There will be a link down in the description below. There's two groups down there. One group gets uh, access, early access to a lot of videos like this, it gets behind the scenes access, gets extended cut videos. And then the other group is the tuner group where you can actually send in tunes. Uh, appreciate all the new subs, man. Keep sharing the content out there. Keep on posting your questions down below. Keep on hitting me up with suggestions. And as always, thank you for stopping by the garage. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good topic.